Before we get into a titration example, I want to briefly do a review of variation, specifically a direct variation. And this is actually something we're going to need to do in future problems when we are creating models to describe a dose and a rate. In this problem, we are told that the dose that a patient receives, which is in micrograms per kilogram per minute, that is directly proportional to the rate in which that patient receives the medication in an IV pump. So a doctor might order the patient to have a particular dosage, a particular amount of micrograms for every kilogram every minute, but then the nurse is going to set the IV pump, and the medication that the patient is receiving in milliliters per hour is going to be directly proportional to that dose. So that's kind of the overview of what's going on here. What we need to do is to create a model, an equation. Specifically, we know that when the patient's receiving 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, when the patient is receiving that dose, we can look at the pump and see that the pump is operating at 18 milliliters per hour. What we need to do is knowing that they're directly proportional and having one instance of a relationship between these two quantities, we want to create a model, in other words, find a formula between dose and rate so that in future problems I can convert from the dose to the rate or the rate to the dose. So I know I just said a lot of things. Let's kind of go back here and think about the quantities that we're talking about. We're talking about a dose that a patient's receiving in micrograms per kilogram per minute. So I'm going to say, let's let D, let D equal the dose in micrograms per kilogram per minute. And I promise that's what that says. Now the other, and that's what it says, the dose, that's the one quantity we're describing. The other quantity we're describing is the rate. So let's let R equal the rate, and this is the rate in milliliters per hour. So again, the dose, which is in micrograms per kilogram per minute, is going to relate to, in this case, the rate that we set the IV pump. Now, how are these quantities related? In this problem, we're told that they are directly proportional. As a review, we know if they're directly proportional, then the one variable, let's say the dose, will equal some constant times the second variable, the rate. So again, knowing that they are directly proportional, I know that this is the general formula, formula that the dose is going to equal some constant times the rate. The problem is just knowing this general formula is not good enough. We want to use one instance for the dose and the rate to solve for this constant. What specific value belongs here for k? Well, the only way to know that for sure is to, again, if we know one instance of a relationship between d and r. So looking at this problem, it says at one particular time, the patient has receiving a dose of 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and the pump at that time over here is operating at 18 milliliters per hour. That's telling me that at one time the dose is 5 and the rate is 18. Knowing that, I can take these values of D equal to 5 and R equal to 18 and plug them into this formula. So I know the general form looks like this. The dose will equal some, some number, some constant, times r. Well, at one time, the dose over here was 5. So the dose at one time was 5 micrograms per kilogram per hour, or excuse me, per minute. What I don't know is this constant of variation. But at that same time when 5 was the dose, the rate was 18. Again, I am plugging these values the dose equal to 5, plugging that in for D, and the rate equal to 18, plugging that in for R. This allows me to, in this case, if I wanted to solve for K, I can divide both sides by 18. Right? I want to solve for K, I can divide both sides by 18. Now what you get for K, right? so over here we'll just have our value of K, and over here you're going to have 0 0.27 repeating. 0 0.27 repeating. Now, it may depend on your instructor or who is uh, the class that you're in, but in my class, what I will ask you to do is to round this number to two significant digits. 
Typically, it's just the hundredths place. But if it's a very small number, you're going to want to round to two significant digits. So what that's telling me is that in this case, I want to use k, a value of k, which is approximately 0 0.28. That value of k is the constant of variation. It's describing the relationship between d and r. So instead of saying d is equal to k times r, knowing that k is equal to 0 0.28, I can write this as the dose is equal to 0 0.28r. This is now a formula that I can use to answer questions about the dose and the rate. So in the future, if I know that the patient stabilizes at a rate of, let's say, uh, 30 milliliters per hour, then I can take that 30 milliliters per hour, plug that in for the rate, and solve for the dose. So again, just a summarization here. I know that the dose and the rate in this problem are directly proportional, which means they're going to have this general formula. That's a review of direct variation. Given that information, and given that at one instance I know the dose was 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and the rate was 18 milliliters per hour, I can plug those values into this general formula, solve for the constant of variation that is specific to this problem. Now let's look at how this problem fits into a titration problem. Now that we have summarized and reviewed direct variation, we can incorporate that into an actual tit titration problem. So we're told that an IV line was ordered to titrate somewhere between this dose of 3 to 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. We know the patient is 20 years old and weighs 113 pounds, and here is their height, 5 foot 2 we know that the solution that we are infusing into the patient has 200 milligrams of this drug and that is contained in 500 milliliters. So again, what I have here is just a list of the problems that we're going to answer. We're going to first figure out if the patient, if we need to start this titration at the minimum dose of 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute, we're going to first figure out how many milliliters per hour the patient should receive. Knowing that, knowing one instance between that dose and that rate, we're going to use that to find the factor number, which in this case is that constant of variation, so we can create a formula. Then once we have that formula, we can answer some questions here. See, the third problem and the fourth problem, those problems are going to ask us to use that formula that we created. So now let's go ahead and solve this first problem of determining the minimum milliliters per hour for this patient. What we need to do is to take the minimum dose, which in this case is 3 micrograms, 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So I'm going to write it like this, 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute. And essentially what I need to do is to, at the end of, I'm going to use dimensional analysis, I need to have milliliters in the numerator and hours in the denominator. So I'm converting micrograms into first milligrams, then milliliters, getting rid of the kilograms, and then converting minutes into hours. So lots of steps here. But if you're comfortable with dimensional analysis, it's really not that complicated. So first, I know I need to get rid of this amount of per kilograms. And the only way I can do that is to use the patient's weight in kilograms. So if I wanted to convert 113 pounds into kilograms, I can divide that by 2.2, and I can round this to approximately... Let's put this in our calculators, 113 divided by 2.2. If we round this to the tenths place, we're going to get 51.4. So what I'm going to do is to use the patient's weight to eliminate this per kilogram. Now this is kind of a, a review of some of the questions we have already been asking, or excuse me, answering up to this point. By multiplying by the patient's weight, I eliminate that kilograms. If I were to stop right now, I would have the total number of micrograms the patient should receive per minute, and I'm getting rid of the kilograms, so I would know the micrograms per minute. I want to eliminate micrograms. I don't want micrograms. And what I first need to do is to convert that into milligrams. I know that because in order to get into milliliters, I need to know the number of milligrams the patient should receive. So I know the relationship, and this is just a basic metric conversion, Micrograms to milligrams is one milligram 
is equivalent to 1,000 micrograms. If I stopped right now, I would have milligrams per minute. Not done yet. I don't want milligrams, so I'm going to cancel out milligrams and go into milliliters. I do know the relationship between milligrams and milliliters, given the concentration of this solution. There are 500 milliliters, and in those 500 milliliters, I am told it contains 200 milligrams. If I were to stop right now, I would have my unit of milliliters. I would know how many milliliters the patient should receive, but it would be in a time per unit of minutes. I don't want minutes. So I can cancel out the minutes by multiplying by another conversion factor, and I want to cancel out minutes and go into hours. And I know there are 60 minutes in one hour. So finally, after all of this, I finally have everything I need. Now we have to be careful here because it turns out we need an exact answer and a rounded answer. So if I take and multiply all those numerators, 3 times 51.4 times 500 times 60, you're going to get a large number, 4,626,000 and that's it. So 4,626,000 and if you divide that by the denominator here we have 1,000 times 200 and we do not need a calculator for this this is 200,000. I need this because I want to refer back to an exact answer. When you put this in your calculator 4 million 626,000 and you divide that by 200,000 I'm gonna get the exact answer of 23 whoops 23.13 that's an exact answer and knowing that we are talking about an IV pump I need to round that to the tenths place 23.1 milliliters per hour what I found in that example is if I needed the patient to receive, given the information about the patient, given their, their weight and also their height, but given that I want to give the patient 3 micrograms for every kilogram they weigh every minute, but they're going to be receiving an IV that contains milligrams, a ratio of milligrams to milliliters, I use dimensional analysis to figure out if I start with 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute, then they must have this 21.3 milliliters per hour if I were to set the IV pump. Now with titration problems, the reason we want to model this with an equation is that the patient may not react to receiving 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So we may have to increase that or titrate it maybe by another you know, a tenth of a microgram per kilogram per minute. So if I needed to maybe 10 minutes later increase this to not 3, but 3.1 micrograms per kilogram per minute, I don't want to have to repeat all these same steps, multiply by the weight and the ratios and a unit of time. I don't want to have to do all this. So what I can do instead is to find a model, which we can also call a formula. We can find a formula specifically going between the dose and the rate. Now, how can I do this? Well, I can do this knowing that in these problems, the dose is going to be directly related to the rate. This is a direct variation, d equal to k times r. Now at one instance, just from this given problem, I, know, I knew that when the patient was receiving 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute, this is what we did in that original problem, micrograms whoops, per kilogram per minute, they were receiving at a rate, this drug, of 23.13. Now I am using the exact, I am using the exact value. I'm not using my rounded value. I'm using my exact value. You're going to need to do this. So at one time, the patient was receiving a dose of 3. So D was equal to 3. I'm looking for this constant of variation, and I know that the rate was 23.13. Once again, it has to be the exact value. Now, just solving for k here, 3 divided by 23.13, I get, and I'm going to write this out, okay, so 
I'm going to get k equal to, I'm going to write this out a little bit, 0 0.12970169. And we can round that to be approximately, if we round that to two significant digits, 0 0.13 which, finally, the reason I'm solving this is so I can write that the dose in these problems is equal to 0 0.13, approximately, times r. Now, if I'm asked questions about the dose and the rate given this patient, I can use this formula to convert between dose and the rate, which we're going to see now on the next slide. We now want to look at this question. Now, as I was hinting at in the last problem, with titration, the patient may not have a, the specific effect to that initial 3 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So if we are now ordered to increase the dose from 3 to 3.4, and we need to change the IV pump, what we can do is potentially, if we wanted to use dimensional analysis, we, we could. But we would repeat, be repeating the exact same steps. So instead, I'm going to use that model, that formula that I created the dose is equal to 0 0.13 to answer this problem. So now I know that the dose has increased to not 3, but now the dose is 3.4. Knowing that, I can plug that value in for D. Knowing that, I can say, well, now the dose is 3.4. What I need to determine is what is that value of R? What is that rate that is associated with that? So now, just using my formula, I can divide both sides by 0 0.13, and I can get my answer. So if you put in your calculator 3.4 divided by 0 0.13, you're going to get, and I'm going to write this out a little bit first, you're going to get that R is equal to 26.1538462. I'm writing the exact answer. And now I can round that, knowing that we're talking about an IV pump, that's approximately 26.2 milliliters per hour. Now, if you were to use dimensional analysis again, you may not get exactly 26.2, because we're using a rounded factor number. Right? So you may not get exactly 26.2, but that's okay. We have modeled the situation with a formula. We're going to use this formula to, given the dose, solve for the rate. One more question that we can answer using this formula. Suppose that the patient has finally stabilized. Now, maybe we increase not to 3.4, but when they're receiving 26.2 milliliters per hour, they weren't responding in the, uh, the way that we wanted. So maybe we would increase to 3.6, 3.8, 4.0. And then finally, what we notice is that according to you know, an initial effect, we see that they are receiving 36 milliliters per hour and they have finally stabilized. What we need to figure out is what is the dose. I don't know the dose, but what I do know is that the rate in this example, they are finally stabilized, this patient, at 36 milliliters per hour. So using this information, I know the relationship between the dose and the rate. I know that the dose times the dose is equal to 0 0.13 times the rate. So I can plug this value of R in for R. So the dose will equal 0 0.13, and the patient has stabilized at 36 milliliters per hour. So now if we multiply those, 0 0.13 times 36, let's do that one more time, 0.13 times 36, you're going to get 4.68. Rounding this appropriately to the tenths place, we would get approximately, the patient is receiving approximately 4.7, and the unit on the dose is micrograms per kilogram per minute. There is a lot of stuff going on in these problems, in these titration problems. The key is knowing that the dose and the rate in these problems they are going to be related to each other uh, via a direct variation. They are directly proportional to each other. So if we can just make one calculation from the dose to the rate, which we did on the last slide, we can use that to find a factor number and thus a formula that we can then use to answer questions with the dose and the rate.